All right. Third talk in the, the series from the, from the Red Hat Search team here. So this is about, um, we've been kind of working on setting up an automated testing environment for Samba and CDB on top of Cluster. Um, the, the motivation is, of course, we, I mean, this was lacking. And I was really so excited when um, sometime back, as Martin mentioned earlier, Martin and Volker managed to finally get the test infrastructure for CTP with local processes and without a clustered file system underneath into Samba self-test. So that was really, really great. It was, it was closing a gap. But the other gap is to test Samba on real clustered file system on a daily or nightly, whatever regular basis, and, and one when there are any, some regressions. So we, we actually started discussing this last year that we wanted to set something up like this because uh, I had, because of the other projects I'm engaged with, I had made some experience with uh, how we were doing CI in GitHub and we are doing uh, integration with a center CI environment that gives free resources for building up test infrastructures for, for open source projects. So the idea was born like last year, we could do something like that. Um, and we, we really started basically two months ago, pretty much, pretty much exactly. And um, now I let uh, Sajin guide you through the uh, like what we've done here with a lot of details. And in the end, I'll be talking a little bit about how the integration with the center CI and GitHub actually works. So over to you, Sajin. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, I'm, I'm Sachin. I work with uh, Gunther and Michael and the same uh, team, which is uh, which works with Lustrofest, but we work on uh, integrating Samba with Lustrofest. Uh, so yeah, as uh, discussed by Michael, one, one of the motivations was to uh, get CTDB tested with a with the proper cluster file system in the background. Another motivation uh, for using uh, was essentially to have an automated test environment. Uh, at the moment, uh, testing is done by manually setting up a cluster cluster with, with Samba, and then uh, the QE engineers run their test suites against this particular cluster. Uh, we wanted to automate that. Uh, so yeah, let's just quickly go through the introductions. Uh, Glusterfs, it is an open source scalable network file system uh, which uses off-the-shelf components. Uh, now, access to this Glusterfs is provided through an API called uh, libgfs gpf. Uh, a G GF API, and uh, uh, also through a fuse module called Cluster of Fuse. Uh, we also export it using NFS, using NFS Ganesha, and uh, we use Samba for SMB. Uh, we don't need much introduction here. Uh, so we use Samba to export Cluster of S over the SMB protocol, and we use the VFS Cluster of S module uh, to talk to the backend Cluster of S cluster. Uh, we also use CTDB, which, uh, which essentially converts Samba to a clustered service. Uh, CTDB provides the necessary uh, internode communication, uh, internode IPC, uh, inter-process communication, which allows uh, clustered TDB database, as well as allows uh, internode messaging, for, uh, especially for things like opera breaks, leaks, lease breaks, et cetera. Uh, additionally, uh, it also uh, manages the Samba server. So uh, switching it up, shutting it down, and it also uh, manages a pool of public IP addresses. Now, these public IP addresses uh, are the ones which are exported uh, for clients uh, to mount and, and use. So some of the challenges uh, involved in setting up an automated system. Uh, you have multiple machines involved. So, uh, the cluster of S module uh, at a bare minimum requires two nodes. Uh, we would also uh, like to execute it with a client, which is separate to, to these nodes. So we need at least three machines. Uh, we have multiple projects involved. So as we just discussed, we have cluster of S built onto that is CTDB and built onto that is Samba. And we have uh, different configuration options. So cluster of S itself, uh, can be set up in a replicated uh, setup. It can be set up in a, a dispersed setup. And then we can also do things like replicated, uh, uh, distributed, and distributed uh, dispersed. Okay. So uh, 
the requirements of the uh, test system is uh, we need to be able to automate setting up of these uh, nodes. Uh, we also need a test runner to be able to uh, run all these uh, tests automatically against uh, the system, and we need to run it periodically. Uh, so uh, at the moment, we run it nightly. So this is the stuff we've been working on for the past couple of months. Uh, it's available on GitHub right now. Uh, we use uh, different branches to separate out the different components of the project. So uh, we'll discuss this in more detail later. Uh, the tools we use, uh, we use CentOS 7. Uh, this is essentially because uh, the cluster packages we, we use, uh, which are the nightly builds with, provided by the cluster, the cluster of ST, uh, they are built for CentOS 7 at the moment. Uh, we also use Vagrant uh, to s set up the VMs and to bring them down. Uh, this uses libvirt in the backend. Uh, we use Ansible. Ansible to deploy the packages, to deploy on the nodes, and uh, we also use an other external uh, project called Cluster Ansible, uh, which provides Ansible scripts uh, to do various tasks uh, in, in this particular uh, project of ours. Such and if it may just real quick chime in, uh, because you mentioned GitHub project, etc. Everything we're presenting here is completely upstream um, it, it's entirely upstream, we, and I actually intended to send this out as the information because we just completed this to the extent we are demonstrating it here or presenting it here a few days ago. I intended to send this thing to the Samba technical mailing list before the conference. I didn't manage to do it, but I'm going to fix that real soon. So all the information will be available in the Samba technical list, and the links are in the slides that will be made available after the conference. So please uh, take a look. There is nothing secret here. It's all upstream. Just wanted to add that. Yeah. So uh, we, we actually built the Samba uh, test packages based out of, uh, uh, of the Samba master branch. Now, this is built nightly. And uh, this, this, is already, this is available. The links will be uh, posted in the next slide. Uh, so these test RPMs are built so that they can be easily consumed via nodes, uh, easily installed on the test systems. Uh, similarly, Gluster also has nightly builds, which are provided by the Gluster team. Uh, the Samba nightly builds are provided for both CentOS 7 and CentOS 8. So uh, uh, the build is actually done through one of the branches in, in the project called Samba build. Uh, this contains the spec file and uh, uh, nightly a job is triggered to rebuild a Samba uh, RPM based on the latest uh, Samba master tree. And just to add to this, we didn't need to put it here. It was just convenient. This could be moved anywhere else. This is just providing these test RPMs. We just did it because we had a, the repository and we had the uh, infrastructure to run those nightly builds with a, with a CI system. That was the only reason. It is not technically otherwise tied to the to the rest of what Sartre is going to demonstrate now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, links to both the Glusterfest nightly builds as well as the Samba nightly builds. These are available uh, for use right now. Uh, this is the main branch, the master branch. Now, this branch is responsible for creating the virtual machines, installing the cluster. Uh, we, we make use of a cluster vars.yaml. This contains uh, simple information about uh, the cluster, uh, information such as uh, the, uh, the number of nodes to be used, the private interfaces for them, that's the IP addresses, and the public IP addresses available to them. Uh, uh, a test info.yaml is generated uh, during runtime. This is generated uh, on the client machine and which is used by the test runner to actually uh, identify the cluster on which the tests have to be run. And then eventually it, it runs tests. Now, uh, let me just quickly go through the, uh, the steps. So we do not directly uh, install uh, the, the cluster nodes. We, we go through an intermediary machine called setup. Uh, the reason for doing this is we need to install a few dependencies. Uh, primarily in this case is cluster Ansible. And uh, we did not, did not want to do it on the host system. Uh, one of the, one of the ways uh, we use this in our team, we use this uh, particular project in our team, is we run the entire system uh, on our local laptop. 
Uh, so we have the entire cluster automatically created in the laptop. And we, we do not want to be, we do not want to install these dependencies on our laptop. So we instead install these dependencies on a temporary machine through which we then do the, uh, the deployment of the cluster nodes. So uh, setting up these, uh, the setup of, uh, apart from the dependencies required, we also uh, copy over all the scripts, uh, maybe some configuration options such as SSH keys, which, which will be required uh, to, to complete the uh, setup onto the setup machine itself. And then once the setup machine has been installed, we go ahead and install the cluster nodes. Now the cluster nodes, this includes first setting up the infrastructure, which is uh, the logical volume, which will be mounted as bricks for the cluster uh, file system. Uh, then we go ahead and create the cluster nodes. Uh, and then we, we then install CTDB and uh, set up the configuration so that the public interfaces are set up. Uh, and eventually we install Samba and enable the uh, Samba uh, service in CTDB. Uh, once Samba is up, the cluster nodes have been installed. We have a ClusterFS uh, volume now exported through Samba. Uh, this of course goes through the ClusterFS VFS plugin. The setup machine then goes and installs the client. Uh, it needs to install a few additional dependencies, uh, essentially for the test runner. Uh, once this has been done, once the setup has been completed, it, it writes a file called testinfo.yaml into the uh, root directory for the client's file. Now this contains information which will be used by the test runner uh, to actually run tests against the cluster nodes. So once th those steps have been, uh, uh, have been completed, we actually trigger a test run uh, through, uh, uh, through the client machine. Now the client machine connects to the cluster interfaces using the public IP addresses. So that brings us to branch tests. Now, uh, these tests are run once the client machine has been installed. Uh, this has to be triggered, of course, from the, uh, the, the setup machine. Uh, this contains a, a test runner. It's, it's a simple test runner created using shell scripts and, and Python scripts. Uh, and we have uh, various tests in there. Uh, we don't have many tests at the moment. We just have a few uh, simple sanity tests, which have been, which, which use the SIFS kernel module uh, to simply mount, unmount. And then we use some specific SMB torture tests. Uh, we use the SMB torture from the latest nightly builds uh, from the Samba packages. And uh, we, at the moment, we don't do it yet, but we plan on reusing the uh, self test infrastructure, which is available in Samba. Uh, this is essentially to, uh, uh, to use the, uh, the, the known fails and the flappable results, uh, that's unreliable results, to use, uh, to just reuse them uh, from Samba. I mean, to add to this, if, sorry for chiming in again, I mean, we've, we have been debating this and looking into it. It would be so great if the self-test runner in, in Samba would be capable of running the test suites that are planned with the test stuff, high stuff against a pre-existing cluster. I think currently that's not possible. This is what we try to kind of do first, but it would require a significant amount of work in Samba's code. But at the very least, the, the subunit filters with the, with the known fail and stuff um, that will be used. So we want to reuse as much as possible. At some point, um, let's see, we might be contributing some stuff back into the master branch, but first we are going to be trying in this uh, separate tests branch and use what's already usable directly. Uh, the focus now is to add more tests. Uh, so uh, we, we have the infrastructure in place. Uh, we just need to add more tests. Okay, so I think back to Michael for the CentOS CI environment. Great, thanks. So what is, um, what is CentOS CI? Um, <laughs> it's, it's part of the CentOS project. Um, it's also a way for, for Red Hat to sponsor open, open source projects to build up uh, CI or test infrastructures. Essentially, this uh, offers free Jenkins-based bare metal machines. So there are some Jenkins runners where you can define and run your jobs. They, they schedule um, and make available bare metal machines, um, <clears throat> uh, x68 and also uh, AMD machines uh, that are capable of running uh, a number of virtual machines, for instance. So um, these can you, you can uh, request a space for your own project there. You can go and um, 
well, define jobs like Jenkins jobs with the so-called Jenkins job builder, the, the YAML file definition of how the job is kind of constructed. So that is run in the Jenkins runner, and then you can see basically it will provision those machines, but they will be staffed with the basic CentOS install, and then you can go and do whatever you want with those machines. So um, for instance, in order to run um, clustered test suites like the one that Sachin has been describing with a bunch of nodes, you just need a single of these hosts. It's like a, it's like a beefy um, machine. So you can, you can bring up um, in, your, in your initialization script or Ansible or whatever, you can bring up these machines. We are typically using the Vagrant Libvirt environment for this. And it's, it's, been, it's running on the CentOS base operating system in this case, but you can run everything you want inside these machines, in these VMs. So I put the link to the, to the CICentOS.org. It's the dashboard um, with all the projects. Um, I've put the link for the wiki of the CentOS project for getting uh, started here. And um, what we have done is the Gluster project already has its space. <clears throat> I was about to request a space for the Samba project, um, but we had already infrastructure that we could use, right? And with the argument that the main motivation for getting started here was to test <clears throat> Samba on top of Gluster, and even those builds that we were doing are explicitly building the Samba Gluster VFS module um, in order to be able to test that. So that was enough for justification to, for the start at least, use the Gluster space. So because under the last URL that I've linked here, um, the Gluster CentOS uh, CI URL, um, this is the location where Gluster collects the job definitions for its Gluster space, and that's integrated with, uh, with the Jenkins um, uh, system there. So in order to add a CI for your project that is somehow related to Gluster, you'll have to drop a YAML file there describing the job, usually have a couple of scripts, um, um, one or more scripts that basically will help you setting up the machine and then you have uh, your actual test cases. This is also why we have uh, separated this out so cleanly in what Sachin described. We have the, the master branch of our project is the setup environment. It assumes a prepared system with Vagrant and uh, all that stuff installed. It will then bring up the VMs, it will install them with our packages, and um, afterwards it will trigger the tests that are pulled from this different branch. And um, the branch that uh, the CentOS CI branch, that is also part of our um, Samba integration repository here, it's just for convenience. It contains basically the script that we're using to prepare the system. Um, to the CentOS system. So it is all very cleanly separated. Right, so you can use the, the master branch to set it up on any machine that has a, a sufficient version of Vagrant Libvirt Ansible running. Um, you can run the tests against any cluster in principle by providing a configuration input YAML file and, you, uh, and the preparation of the setup uh, of the host machine is in this script. Um, so this script is, uh, a little bit tricky in that it's also used for a couple of purposes. So if you go to the next slide, please. So what are we actually integrating and testing here, really? We have two things, two triggers, as it's called. And uh, I think we'll have enough time. I may, might show you uh, um, such a Jenkins job description. And in principle, how all that looks uh, after we are done through the slides. So we have the nightly triggers, or kind of time-based triggers. Currently, we are just triggering it once a day. Um, so we're doing one full test run from master. It is um, just setting up the CentOS VMs with, or installing the, the cluster cluster and what all Sachin has uh, described. It's pulling the test repo, it's executing all the, the tests against it. And um, we have the nightly run for the Samba builds. So just pulling it the, the latest master branch and building it into a test RPM. But we're also testing the PRs. So we, have a, we cannot merge anything into any of the four branches without it being tested. So in the master branch, it will run the full test. In the test branch, it will run the full test. Even in the prepar preparation script in the center CI, it will run the full cluster test. The Samba build, as I mentioned before, is kind of separate. It just builds the RPMs and does the basic install test, nothing fancy. <clears throat> so 
And for the first three branches, the very same script is used. We kind of run and trigger the actual tests. Um, so um, this is a little bit what's, what's happening here. And um, I think uh, that roughly describes it. So oh, but what's, what's nice is there is not only the CentOS CI GUI, the dashboard for Jenkins, but it's also nicely integrated into GitHub itself for the pull requests. So if you have the pull requests and you have various criteria and checks that need to pass, you can have several of them. And uh, the CentOS CI one is, via some webhooks, very nicely integrated. So unless this reports the passing of the test suite, then you will not be able to merge it. Um, that's, uh, that's how it goes. So um, it's pretty powerful. Um, and um, yeah, it's used in a lot of places right now. Um, you can continue to, yeah, future roadmap. So yep. you want to continue? Sorry. No, you, you could go ahead. Yeah, and, and essentially, now the infrastructure is there. What we currently have as tests is very minimal. A little bit SIFS mount uh, consistency tests, and, and we have the first few uh, SMB torture tests from SMB2 running there, but nothing fancy. So now the infrastructure is completely there. Everything is protected by, by those run, test runs against the PRs. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the main thing is adding more tests there. And um, ideally adding, since we are focusing here on, on file server testing, <clears throat> clustered file server testing, using those tests from the SMB torture that use the UNC list and attached to multiple nodes, using the, like as many as possible of the SMB protocol tests, that kind of stuff is what we are planning to do next. Um, different setups of the cluster with different replication, more nodes, different like erasure coded, whatever we can imagine. In the end, we could use a similar system, not only against cluster, but for other um, systems at a, in the backend as well. Think Ceph, think other open source, I should say, um, file systems. However, um, of course, that would then not naturally live under a cluster org, but would live under a Samba org in, in CentOS CI, but could very easily be done as well um, once we have such a one. So um, <clears throat> then uh, create more shares with different constellations, etc., on the given cluster. Um, for CentOS CI itself, like we probably want to get a Samba space. It should not be a big deal for us. And um, the by way more complicated question, which we were not able to make uh, much progress on, was would the kind of this set of pretty nice free resources for testing actually could we somehow make use of them in our GitLab, which works differently from GitHub, where the integration is quite nice at this point, and. Um, Andrew and the Catalyst team had done a great deal of work and effort in, in automating and bringing the, the, the Catalyst cloud into this and um, based on some OpenStack installation, which is quite different from the Jenkins thing we have here. So this needs more research. Um, we will look into this. Um, but at this point, there is nothing to show here. Um, so anybody with more knowledge about how GitLab works, uh, I would be more than happy to um, evaluate and see if, we, if this could be made use there. That would be a great way of enhancing our self-test um, resources for, uh, for the GitLab merge requests. Yep, that's mostly it. We're fast. All right. Um, do you want to take some questions, maybe? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, choose uh, to uh, put them in the Q&A section, or you can use the raise hand button, and we will give you speaking rights. So choose now, I guess. We have uh, quite some minutes left. Let me see the question in the chat. They are currently there, mostly for the previous talk still. Let me see. And in the. Okay, Andrew uh, asked a question in the QA section. Have you tried using the network namespace support in selftest.pl? Oh. Um, 
Nope. I, that's a good, uh, like, I, I didn't spend a lot of time digging through self-test, so I will happily um, look into that. I saw there's a Windows target, but uh, that is just mentioned in the help text, so that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Network namespace, uh, maybe that's worth looking at. I wasn't aware of that. Thanks for the end. Anyone else? Uh, some questions? As mentioned, we could give a slight tour around those web pages and see how everything is integrated. But I think it's not going to be very exciting. Um, as announced, I will send this uh, the whole information to somebody technical as well. And I would invite folks to look at this, see if they find it useful, look at contributing. And um, this is by all means meant to be a Samba and Glasper at this point uh, shared integration CI project. So um, reach out to us uh, over the um, upstream channels if, if you need to, if you would like to discuss or, or get engaged or have questions, I would say. 